What we do is that we focus on bringing an excellent education to children in low-income communities by recruiting a movement of leaders, young leaders, typically fresh graduates, to teach in underprivileged schools for two years. Uh, we do this with the intention that they spend two years teaching, empowering and training students to discover their full potential and then go off to change the world later on, both the students and the participants. So we then hope an alumni movement of leaders would create a long-lasting change. I fell in love with the Teach First model, but it focused on culture, talent and leadership as the key aspects of transformation. I think the biggest challenge was how am I myself going to be a leader that represents the vision, mission and values of the organisation so that it then gets cascaded throughout the organisation, which is then the culture. So it's always been a constant reflection, learning, personal transformation that I'm always going through to always improve, transform and grow. You cannot expect students to be empowered if the teachers are not empowered. So a lot of our training for fellows or our teachers is focus on unpacking what has their self-belief mindset and limitations about their personal potential, them experiencing a personal transformation first and then translating that into the professional setting of teaching and leading. So I think for Teach From Malaysia, we take that issue quite seriously and I think our focus is that we want to work with the ministry to change perception on education and I think one focus for us is that, hey, whatever it is you want to do, why not try teaching first? So that's how we want to not only make teaching kind of sexy and attractive, but also targeting these top graduates and asking them, hey, is it, is it all about the money or is it actually about making, creating a legacy or changing things that you want to see in the world? So when you finish the two years, most fellows actually think like, hmm, could I stay on another year? Could I do a few more years to see my students graduate? And, and some do, right? 30-40% stay on in school as full-time teachers. And we hope that they will become principals and school leaders. My favourite story is that in 2012, this principal stood up when we were briefing them about Teach Malaysia. And he yelled at me saying, I don't know what you're smoking. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. You shouldn't be running an education program. I don't want to accept these teachers. He was honest because at least he was telling me what he was thinking. You might have silent detractors that say yes in front of you and then put in roadblocks or barriers later on. Right? So it was great because then over lunch we had a conversation and then we managed to get him to open up a bit. And then the best part happened is that when he met our participants on the first day of their school, he ended up having a six hour conversation with them and they became his favourite teachers within that six hours, right? Low income communities face the same problems universally. Do I have food? Do I have a job? Are my kids taken care of? Do I have housing and shelter? And they're all surviving on a day to day basis. A lot of the kids we see have those challenges. But the ones that decide to opt in and stay see that their path out of this situation is through education. And those that see that path then choose to take it. What I see in the classroom is always only the tip of the iceberg. So if you're misbehaving or if you're kind of like not, not on task, uh, there's usually a lot of things that's happening outside. And so I actually spend quite a bit of time outside of school like, hey, this student's running this shop, selling this kueh, or you know, this student's playing basketball here, but at night needing to help his parents do this and this. So that actually built a lot of credibility in the classroom, that when I walked in, there was a very different kind of like, okay, this teacher uh, knows what I do, cares about me, or at least means business. Lah. I don't have a silver bullet solution, but I have a key bet at least is that we are training students to identify problems in, in their communities and in their uh, families and uh, schools and then run a program or run an initiative to solve it. A person from Google that I heard once before that said, in the next 10 years, what's going to change because of all the automation and all that, it's not really going to be skill sets that are required from people, but actually values and soft skills and leadership. I think the journey of transformation um, always starts with self-transformation. So don't expect out there to change if you're not willing to change in here. My challenge to a lot of people, whether you're a young working professional or whether you're a graduate or whether you've been working for a long time is um, asking yourself, 
what can you do? Um, how can you contribute? And I think a lot of how Teach for Malaysia started was there were just too many complaints, um, but who actually puts their hand to the plough? Who actually says, like, I want to do something about it?